42. What's that? Manny, said Manny. It's the Wakawakian peasants bearing torches, said Mo. Why are they carrying torches? asked Jack. Who cares, Manny says. It's probably some weak trick of theirs to distract us so we won't ask them who's been stealing our Zitkis berries. They can't do any harm with those torches. The city is made entirely from stone. The Wakawakian populace was arriving in large groups and gathering on the wide steps of the Palace of Culture. Each Wakawakian carried a burning, smoking torch. When all the Wakawakians had gathered on the steps, the three Nafsulians addressed them. Miserable citizens of Waka Waka, they began. It has come to our attention that some of you have been offering our Zitkis berries to our Martian neighbors at a reduced price. We want the ringleaders. We will give five Zitkis berries to anyone who comes forward with information. Fooey, someone in the crowd shouted. Banana oil, shouted another. Your grandmother's mustache, someone else said. The Waka Wakians weren't particularly original in their insults, but they were showing a lot of courage. I felt sort of proud of them. We will not waste any more time, the Nafsulian said. We have important Martian guests to attend to. It was Mo who said this. I was glad they hadn't figured out that we were fakes. They were so excited by our story of the Zitkis berries being sold without their knowledge that they didn't even try to find out whether it was true or not. Alan Mendelssohn told me later that this is called the big lie technique. You start off with a whopper and try to spring it on your victim all of a sudden, and he'll be too excited to do too much thinking. It's like this. Someone rushes in and shouts, Your grandmother's house is on fire! Come and save her! You might be six blocks away when you realize that your grandmother lives in a mobile home park in Nefish Park, Florida. The Nafsulians were just too greedy to stop and think when someone told them that their stolen Zitkis berries were being stolen from them stolen from them. They just reacted. If someone doesn't if someone doesn't talk right now, we'll just go inside and send out our little pet. He'll take care of you, if you know what we mean. The Nafsulians all laughed nasty laughs. This was going to be the test of the Waka Wakian courage. I knew that Alan Mendelssohn had passed the word not to run away, even if the unfathomable evilness was sent for. But I knew that the Waka Wakians were deathly afraid of the monster, and usually ran the moment the Nafsulians threatened them with it. There was a wave of terror that went through the crowd. It was noticeable. But nobody ran. They all wanted to run. You could feel them. You could feel that, too. Anybody feel like talking? The pirate said. Nobody made a sound or said a word. They just stood there, holding their torches. All right, you brought this on yourselves, the Nafsulian said. And just for fun, we're push, we've pushed the button that electronically locks the city gate. This time you can't run away from our pet. There were some more whimpers of fear from the crowd. It's one thing to make up your mind not to run away from a dreadful monster. It's something else entirely to find out that you have no choice in the matter. Last chance, the Nafsulian said. The three Nafsulian bandits went inside the doors of the Palace of Culture. There were a few scattered screams from the crowd. I'd been feeling so sorry for the frightened Wakawakians that I'd forgotten all about the fact that I was standing not twenty feet from the door out of which the intolerable abomination was going to appear at any moment. All of a sudden, I remembered that. I also realized that I was so scared and excited that I probably wasn't going to be able to go into State 26 if things went wrong. There were maybe twenty-five, tw five terrible seconds. The Waka Wakian torches wavered. The thick, choking black smoke made the whole city seem as dim as a forest. My heart was pounding. Then something appeared in the doorway. The Wazzle! I felt sick and scared. It was big as three men. Three little men. Wait a minute. The Wazzle was supposed to be invisible, and yet I could see something. In the dim light caused by the smoke from the torches, I could see that the Wazel, the invisible terror, was actually Manny, Mo, and Jack, the three Nafsulian bandits. They were the Wazel. The Wakawakian pop populace caught on in just a few seconds after I did. First, there were some giggles, then some loud laughter, then a deafening l roar. Manny, Mo, and Jack looked confused. Twenty thousand Wakawakians, who were supposed to be scared silly, were pointing at them and laughing. Now, Alan Mendelssohn whispered in my ear, while they're still confused, let's command them to surrender. I went into State 26 with Alan Mendelssohn, and we commanded the three Nafsulians to remove and replace their little straw hats continuously while rubbing their bellies with a circular motion, the old Klugarsh mind control trick. It worked. The Nafsulians became 
gradually became more visible, looking at each other with amazed expressions as they continued to rub their bellies and remove their hats in the classic Nafsulian gesture of complete surrender. The crowd was cheering, They've surrendered! They've surrendered! The crowd began to call for the Martian High Commissioner, Rolls up! Rolls up! They shouted. People stepped to the side and made a little path through the crowd, and up the steps came a very dignified-looking man. He was wearing a sort of green and white sweater and black and white shoes with plaid socks. I am Rolls Up, High Commissioner of the 12th Existential Plane of Mars, the dignified man in the sweater said. I am here to officially acknowledge that you have made the ultimate gesture of surrender, which no Nafsulian can ever retract, and to offer, as a representative of a neutral government, to provide you with safe conduct and make sure you get home. The Nafsulians looked as though they were afraid of Rolls Up. We'll be starting out for Nafsuli, a plane of existence, almost at once, he said. And then he said to me, said to us, I'll start out, I'll, I'd start out for home without hesitating if I were you. I don't think you can stay here safely for much more than an hour. You don't want to get stuck in Waka Waka. Then he waved to the cheering crowd of Waka Wakians, and he and the three Nafsulians faded and vanished before our eyes. Lance Hershelsheimer rushed up to us. You boys are great Waka Wakian heroes, he said. We want to honor you and also celebrate our return to complete liberty with an all-night fleetic ceremony beginning in one hour. There was a wild cheering from the crowd. You couldn't hear yourself think. Alan Mendelssohn and I went into State 26 and tuned ourselves back to Hogborough.